Okay, what's going on guys? So uh, I wanted to do a quick video on how to set up your Azeron and Rewazd. So your Rewazd should look like this, right? There'll be a couple peripherals on the left side here. As you can see, this is my old keyboard. This is my Glorious Model O- mouse, and then this is my Azeron. You can also have, say, like an Xbox controller, but it's not necessary. Um, on the bottom left. So what you want to, what I want to talk about first is grouping peripherals together. So it's always a good idea to group peripherals together. Um, so what you're going to do is hit this small little button right here. It can be very easily overlooked. I think that's where people get really confused when they first see this software um, and they get a little lost. So click that. This is going to come up. So the left one is the Azeron. Um, and then you can add any other controllers that you want to kind of group together. Um, so then Glorious Model O. Um, so that's just my Azeron and my mouse, which I use all the time. Click Save, boom. So now they're grouped together. You can see right here, um, it kind of shows off the map, off the screen, sorry, but uh, it says Azeron plus the Glorious Model O. Um, so that's grouped together. Now, if you want to make a at a game or whatever the case may be, um, you will come up here. I have a bunch of different profiles, but we will just add a new one so I can kind of show you through the process and how to do all this. So you would just hit add, um, make up a game. So we're just gonna say game test um, and, uh, and then add it, okay? Now what you're going to find is if you hit this eyeball here, you're going to um, show what's actually active in the group. So the keyboard is not going to be active in the group. It's just your gamepad and your mouse. So if you're going completely native, you can just click on any key, right? Um, hit J or whatever you want that key to be. What I will do is normally I will have this on a different screen. I will have my game opened up and I will look at the key binds in the game. And then I will put them on Rewaz according to what I want that key to be in game. That way, if I ever delete the game um, or install the game, then those keys will still be saved in my profiles or in my game lists on Rewaz all the time as long as I have the save file. From there, what I will do, and what this is kind of like a small trick, is I'll just put the 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 key that I bound and then just say, I don't know, this is, you know, jump, whatever the case may be. Okay. Uh, hit that little button right there. And then that way, when you hit on this button, which is show description, it'll say J jump. So let me just show you real quick. If I go to Halo MCC, um, I'm sure we'll save that and then we'll go back to it. Um, as you can see here, right? So you'll see all of the keys that are bound for Halo MCC. Then I hit that button, and then now it shows me um, what the key is and what it actually does. So this is very helpful if I put it on a different screen and I forget what a key is or whatever the case may be, or I'm looking for what the key is, then boom, I have it all there. Kind of tells me what it says on the screen because um, what it's going to say on the screen is just like R. So I'm going to look here and find, okay, R. Okay, yeah, that's right. I, I found that key to R. Um, okay. So then now we'll go back to, uh, let's see. Game test, I believe. Yep, okay. So now we're back at game test. So like I said, you can bind any key you want, All right? So K, whatever, L, and then um, see how I bound them, um, but I didn't put a description. So because I have showing a description, it will only show what I have for description. Then when I click over, show mapping, boom, I have what's showing for mapping. Okay, now we're going to go into auto detect. So um, what I find to be very useful is to start a game, um, control, alt, delete, right? And then go to task manager. Um, you will right click on what that um, game is. And if you right click, it should say show location. Um, you can copy and paste that location. And then when you go into associated apps, or cancel, auto, de sorry, associated apps, yes. Um, and then you go add exe, right? Then you can just paste 
that location in the top bar here and then that will bring you so say it's far cry right and i would just copy it from the location from the task manager and then hit far cry and then open right got it this app has been chosen from another game got it it'll show up down here and every time far cry opens this game profile will automatically open for you you don't have to find it you don't have to search for it whatever it's right there um, you can also add some game art um, I have where is it? downloads so I have some some game art or whatever so you, whatever this is just like a teaser from the Azeron um, add it and then boom there it is in the background perfect um, so that is for auto detects then you have um, configs so what you can do with configs is you can say game tests um, say you want say it's MCC it's a perfect example so say it's MCC and you have Halo 4 and you have Halo 3 and you have Halo 2 and you want you know your dual wield to be two different keys but with Halo 4 you want a certain key that you're already using for something else then boom right so then let's just say this is like Halo 2 um, bam and so then this will be renamed to so this was the config one was the original one that we were just messing with um, so let's just say that was Halo 4 okay um, so then boom Halo 4 but then when you go to Halo 2 there's nothing there so you can rebind all of these and then just click in between each one that you want before the game starts and then it'll automatically change and then you just apply it and then boom right halo 4 it's down here game test halo 4 come down here and then well there's nothing bound so it's not going to show anything um, and then apply it and you'll see down there halo 2 it's applied um, boom okay so that's configs um, and then you have shifts so shifts are interesting um, so what you can do with shifts are you can essentially bind a shift key so then that way when you click it it quickly shifts over to another profile um, and then that profile will be your give me one second Um, sorry, so if you are in a tank in, say, Battlefield, and you want to change the keys, but you want to quickly on the fly change it because you're in the game. So it wouldn't be as if it was Halo 2 and Halo 4, right? It would be as if you wanted to change the, conf the key com keybinds configuration in the game quickly, or if it's like flying in Battlefield, or if it's Arma and you're in a tank or whatever, and you want to change the keybinds on the fly, then you can click and hold it or click and toggle it, and then it'll automatically switch over when you're in the tank. You'll use the keybinds, boom, 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 and then when you want to switch out, bam, you hit the key again, it toggles off. Um, what I've seen people do is use um, 10 keys. So if you have a 10 keyless keyboard and you have a 10 key hanging around, plug that in and then just use that as the shortcut for toggling between the, the however many you know shortcuts you have, one through four. Um, and then that will help you go from tank keybinds all of a sudden to your ground keybinds to your a aviation keybinds, etc. cetera. Um, so the shift can be extremely useful. I don't use it that much. I'm probably going to use it in Battlefield 2042 when that comes out. So that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Um, so from there, um, the five-way switch. So this is the front of the Azeron. If you look on the side, you're going to come to this portion right here. You're going to click on this button bam and then this is your five key okay um so for this right you're gonna have your forward your left your right your back same thing you're going to um key bind it however you want now not many people do this but you can if you'd like you can actually set this to the left stick or was so if you wanted to do movement with the five way you can do that i don't know why you would but you can um you can also make it arrows some people do actually like to use that 
Um, so you click on that um, and then it'll automatically, right? That'll be your forward, that'll be your left, that'll be your right, and that'll be your down. Um, and what's nice is when you click on this, it automatically does it for you. You don't have to go through and click each one. And it'll do the same thing down here and I'll show you that here in just a second. Um, so when you click off of it, again, it unbinds it. And then the middle one is just that middle um, push in. Um, same thing here, this is for push in. Um, so you can bind that to whatever you want. I normally don't use the push just because um, it can get uh, a little loose. Um, I put stainless steel screws in my Azeron, so it's, it's very solid, but I just, I don't use it very often, so I don't bother. Um, but same here, so you click on here, um, you can make it WASD, and once you click on it, it automatically makes it WASD, um, or your left stick, automatically all the outsides are changed, um, just has you, how you want it. Um, now where it gets really tricky is, um, and I wouldn't say really tricky, but this is where things get a little confusing for people, is the advanced options of the joystick. Um, let me go back here real quick. Um, so you're gonna say, say it's, you know, uh, left stick, boom, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to advanced, and so this is where things can get a little more confusing. Um, so here you have your rotation. Um, your rotation is where your natural forward is on your, um, movement. So what you can do is, is you can go to um, Game Controller Tester, I believe is the website. I'll link it in the description. Um, and what you can do is you can see where your actual joystick is moving. So what I normally do is I'll close my eyes, I'll push forward, and then I'll open my eyes and look in the Game Tester. If it's too far to the right, then I will adjust it here, right? Um, or sorry, if it's too far to the right, then I'll move it left, right, to move that. If it's too far to the left, then I'll move it right. Um, this way you can then, you know, zero in what feels good for forward, right? You adjust it, you'll close your eyes. Well, first save it and apply it. And close your eyes, push forward, boom, see if it's the same. Um, and if it's good, then just keep it there and you're good to go. Um, now for the vertical axis range. Now this is interesting. So if you if you do a lot of forward sprinting or whatever the case may be, and you want you know the 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 W or the forward to be wider up top and the back to be wider on the bottom, then you can adjust that or make it more narrow. So as soon as it's a very small window where you're moving forward, and then it's a quicker movement left and right. Um, you can do the same thing with the horizontals, right? So then that way your left and right are smaller and your diagonals are wider, right? So if you don't like, if you like say it's a game where, you know, strafing makes you move slower, so then maybe you just want to be very accurate with these strafes left and right. Um, same thing with the running forward. Um, but then you can also click this and then fine tune it either up or down, or you can just, you know, highlight, delete it, whatever the case may be, um, and do whatever like actual number you need. Um, eight directional, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, now when you get to the curves, this is, this is where it gets a little confusing. So we're going to do a custom one. So the way I explain this is that think of this line as like your default movement. Okay. Um, and then think of this as your joystick. So this would be the absolute start point of your joystick. So in the very middle, and then this would be the furthest part of your joystick like tacked out as far as you can. And then this is the speed in which your character moves or the, the point in which how fast it ramps up. So if I were to do this, right, this would be extremely aggressive. So as my joystick pretty much moves, like, I don't know, 10% of the way from the center toward the outside, so like I'm moving it very little, then it's going 100% automatically. Um, which you can also accomplish through dead zones. But um, if I wanted to make it really slow, right? So I did something like along the lines of this, then what's happening is my joystick, as I'm moving it further and further away, it's going very slow as if um, the speed is super slow. And then at the very end, as I get my joystick closer and closer to the edge, it goes, it ramps up super fast and then goes you know, you know, zero to 60 quickly. Um, I hope I explained that well. 
Probably not. I'm sure I'm going to have lots of questions about that. Maybe I'll do another video just pertaining to this because it's a lot. It can get really confusing. Um, down here with the zone shape, you can do a lip, uh, elliptic, right, where you can make your X and Y different. And as you can see here, um, I'm bringing in the left and right um, and making it tighter or wider, um, just depending on how your joystick reacts. I usually just do radial. It's a lot easier that way. Um, if you say have it too small and there's a problem with your joystick, what you'll have is the jitters, right? And so you'll see kind of the joystick jitter on the game pad tester website. Um, so if that's the case, then you're just going to bring this out in increments very slowly and apply it. Always make sure you apply or else it's not going to apply and show in the game tester, uh, game pad tester. Apply it. If there's no jitter, then you're perfect. That's where you need it, right? So, as, and what you want to do is you want to make this as, as small as you can without getting jitter. So then, as soon as you move your joystick, it's automatically registering. So, like, you want it that tight, you know, to make it register. Now, if you're not using a restrictor, I wouldn't really mess around with this too much. I would just mess around with the bottom one and you'll be fine. But if you are messing with a restrictor, what you want to do is you want to make these as tight as possible, right? Um, which essentially, when you're making the tight dead zone, you are literally just doing pretty much this um, with your with your dead zones, right? So you're, the little movement you're making is making it go zero to you know 100 very quickly, very rampant. Um, because the problem is, is your restrictor is pretty much stopping your movement here. So what you want it to do is exactly this. So what you're doing is, is this outer dead zone here, as you can see, you're bringing it really, really tight. So as soon as you move that joystick out this way, it's going 100% because that restrictor is stopping you at this point. So what's really nice about that is that when you want those quick strafes back and forth, that's exactly what you're going to get back and forth, back and forth, back and forth very, very quickly, um, which will help because that's what some people do. Um, you know, have complaints about with the Azeron is that you're not strafing very quickly because when you're using WASD, you have to bring it all the way to out to the outside for it to register. Well, in this case, you're registering it immediately. So you're really getting that quick and snappy um, back and forth movement. Um, <clears throat> so also with this portion here, what's really unique is so say you're not using WASD and you're using um, um, your left stick, so 360 analog. Um, now what you can do is you have left stick high, left stick mid, and then left stick low. So if I say up, right, so forward, left stick high, and say sprint is um, shift, okay? Now I can make it so that as soon as my joystick meets in this zone, my character is automatically sprinting. Um, now say walk is, I don't know, uh, control, right? So now if I'm inside this zone, then my character is slowly walking. And then, then I have a run in this zone, right? Which is the natural and then the sprint up here. And I can do that with every angle that I want, right, left, up, whatever. Um, and so it, it makes it super unique um, and very helpful um, because you can get super creative with what you do with these inner and outer dead zones. Um, very, very fun, very, very unique, and really, really cool. Um, so that is really the gist of it for now. Um, and then I might make another video going more in depth on uh, emulation. Hopefully that helps you out. Hit that like button, helps me out. Um, and uh, let me know what you think in the, uh, in the comments. Have a good one. Later.